talking with Jane and Mark Hewitson about a faith-building life experience they had. Tell me about it, Mark. You got sick. Yeah, I got the flu. It just kept getting worse, and that's about the last thing I remember. I'm in real estate, so I was still helping folks, you know, buy and sell houses and, and working with them, but I got to a point, I think it was a Saturday, where I just couldn't get out of bed. So then apparently, from what Jane tells me, that I was passing out in the bathroom, which I don't remember any of that, and then we decided to call the uh, 911. He had gotten sick on a Saturday, and I came down with the flu on Wednesday, and then by Saturday, I was starting to feel a little bit better, but he was clearly getting worse, and he'd had it for a whole week at that point. A typical guy, he's like, no, it's nothing, it's nothing, and wouldn't, but by Saturday afternoon, he said to me, I think I need to call an ambulance. He called me from the hospital to say, you better come, because they're putting me into ICU, they're saying it's like my body is shutting down. So I went in, even though I was feeling just miserable, he went up to ICU, our son Joshua came, and uh, we went up with him. They had put him on a, I think it's called a BPAP machine, which is like a CPAP, only more industrial, I guess, or whatever, that help, was helping him breathe. But he was like pulling off the mask and joking with us and stuff, so I was like, okay, I think he's going to be fine. You know, he just needs a little help with the breathing. So I said, look, I'm going home. I'm going to bed because I'm feeling terrible. And Joshua stayed for a little longer, and then he left because he was he seemed to be okay. Um, but then I got a call in the middle of the night saying that they'd had to put him on a ventilator because he was not doing well on the BPAP machine. So that was kind of concerning. And then I got a call a little bit later saying they were going to helicopter him to a teaching hospital in Baltimore. So that's when I knew okay, this is really serious. This is not, he's not just going to get better quickly. We had to wait a long time before we talked to a doctor, but a doctor finally came out early Sunday morning and talked to us. He said, we are basically doing everything we can do for him. There's nothing more we can do. If he gets any worse, he won't make it. So that's what Sunday was. It was just waiting and praying um, to see what would happen. And he did. Do, make it through the day and started to improve ever so slightly but his like his lungs had shut down his heart was not working properly his kidneys had shut down um, just pretty much every system in his body had shut down and he was you know living because of machines basically at that point for the first week it was really sort of a is he going to make it kind of a situation and then we, he started gradually started to get better and things kind of settled down a little bit and so we began to realize, okay, you know, it looks like he's going to survive this. But that was kind of where I hit the wall because I had always sort of thought in the back of my mind that, okay, the one situation God will never put me in is where my husband is disabled because I don't know how I would deal with that. I, it would just be more than I could handle. And so then here I was facing a situation where it was clearly going to be a very long recovery and no guarantee that it was going to be a full recovery. Um, and so I was really worried. I was very anxious about the whole situation. I remember I got down on my knees in my bedroom and I felt like Hezekiah laying out that letter in front of God in the temple. I said, God, this is the situation. This is way beyond anything I can fix. I'm kind of a fixer. Like if there's a problem, I feel like I need to fix it. And this was a situation I couldn't fix. And I said, I think you've put me in this position for a reason. I think you want me to learn that I can't fix everything, that I have to trust in you. And so I'm giving this problem to you. I'm handing it to you right now. And I'm going to let you take care of it for me. And that was such a turning point for me because I had such peace after that. Um, you know, there was certainly a lot of struggles over the next several weeks. Mark was in ICU for five weeks. He was in the hospital for seven and then in a rehabilitation center for another, eight, another week. Um, and it seemed like for every two steps forward, there was a step back over and over again. There were a lot of times when 
you know, we thought he was doing fine. And then all of a sudden, oh, this could really go south really quickly. All through that, I just trusted God completely. I, you know, I was like, I, you know, I know there's no guarantee that he's going to survive this or that he's going to recover fully, but I'm not worried anymore because I know you're in charge. You're taking care of this. And I could see things falling into place that made me see his hand too. I had four kids living at home. Uh, three of them were still in high school, but they all just, you know, stepped up and took care of themselves and stuff. My job, I work as a speech pathologist in the public schools. Um, it's not easy for me to take time off during the school year because I have to make up all the sessions that I miss. And I was very panicky about that. Work really stepped up. They provided subs for me, which they don't usually provide subs for speech pathologists, but they did. As I look back, as I look over the setbacks that we had as he was in the hospital, I see how it all kind of evolved into the situation that was the most favorable outcome in the end, which it, when you're going through it, you don't see it. But when you look back at it, you see, you know, it was perfect. It was God's perfect timing. He knew how long Mark needed to be there and, and the kinds of setbacks that he needed to have to get him to the point where he would recover. It was a long haul. When he came home, he could barely walk. Um, his goal was to be able to walk his daughter down the aisle in May and June. He got out of the hospital the first week of May. He wanted to be able to walk his daughter down the aisle at the, end, the end of June. Yeah, without his cane. And he did it. So because he was under such heavy sedation, he wasn't moving for weeks. And we don't always realize that. But when you don't use your body, it atrophies really quickly. So it took him months to get back. And he still has some residual physical mm -hmm. effects from it. Um, but it took him months to get back to the point where he could walk independently and go up and down stairs and do all that. Um, so that was, it was a very long recovery. The other side of it is financially, I was very worried at first, when it first happened, how I was gonna pay she the bills. She sold my car. <laughs> yes. I sold his car. <laughs> I was I was in panic mode to start with, and I was like, "We have to sell his car. We have to sell his car. We need to we need to make the car payments on the other car. So we got to sell his car." So I sold his car. This was before I laid the problem out before God. We're very dependent on his income to pay our bills, and I was like, "How am I going to do this as a realtor? This, when he's not working, there's no income. He lost some deals as a result about of seven deals getting of sick. I was very worried about that." But when I gave that problem to God, I said, I'm not going to ask for help, for financial help. You're going to take care of it. I know you are. And he did. We got financial help without asking for it. It came. And it, it even came to the point where I had sort of thought, well, this is probably what I need before he'll be back on his feet. And that's exactly what we got, you know. So he really, he, he enabled us to, to manage in that respect, too. So that was... It was amazing. And the support of the Brotherhood was phenomenal. We got so many cards, Facebook messages. I got a card from people in um, England who said, you don't know us, but we're praying for you and your husband. We heard about your situation. We're praying, you know, and heard from people all over the world. And really amazing, the, the amount of support that we had. It took a, probably a full year before I felt like I was mentally normal again. It was weird because she kept telling me we've got a couple months before the wedding. We were talking about it, but the months were jumbled up. I didn't understand months and I couldn't figure out that June comes here in January. So it, everything was jumbled. It took quite a while. Um, but I do remember the first thing that she said to me was we sold your car, which not a really big deal, you know, but it was like, wow, I must have been really out because I had no real comprehension of the time or anything. I can't say whether that was something that was sent by God, but God used that experience in a way that changed my life, changed my husband's life. For me, it was just such a faith building experience. It really was. Honestly, before this happened, there were difficulties. We were having some troubles. And I feel like since that's happened, like Mark was not taking care of his health before. 
it was a wake-up call to him that he's not immortal <laughs> and he's taken so much better care of his health since that happened so you know people come to me now um, that I haven't seen in a long time and they'll say to me oh that was such a terrible experience you went through and I'm thinking yeah it was but actually it was probably the best experience of my life because of the results from it and what I learned from it. But the Bible says, you know, we, trials come into our life to teach us things and we can learn and grow from them. And if we allow that to happen, they can be some of the best experiences that we go through. The reality is I brought it on myself. I mean, that's the reality. I don't think it was God that brought it on. I could have taking better care of myself, watch what I put in my body, taking, you know, better exercises. So it was, you know, my own doing to get there and uh, fortunate that I made it through. Even though I was always a believer, there was a part of me that held back from truly trusting God completely. Um, and I, but I really believe God put me in this situation to to where I was in a position where I couldn't fix it. It was so beyond what I could manage. Um, I was just overwhelmed by it. And I had no choice. You know, I could sit there and be totally overwhelmed and miserable, or I could take that step of faith. And I, you know, I knew I really needed to take that step of faith. I knew that was something that was lacking in my life. And so that's, I think, what drove me to just do it, because I'm like, because I had literally said to God in, previously in my life, you will never do this to me, will you? You'll never put me in that position because I know I couldn't manage that. And he did. And I kind of almost laughed with God on that. I kind of like, you did this. <laughs> you did this on purpose. And so, you know, I knew I had to. I had no choice. I had to give it to him. And boy, he took care of it when I did. So what was that feeling again when you turned it over and gave it to him? Did you feel anything physically? I just had such a peace that came over me. You know, because when you're anxious, you got that churning stomach and things like that. And, you know, I envision, I, I'm a very visual person. So like when I pray, I, I usually picture myself in the Holy, Holy of Holies, looking at the Ark in order to really feel the presence of God. And um, so I just pictured myself being there and taking my problems in the form of a letter and laying them out like Hezekiah did and saying, I, here, it's yours. You have to take it because I can't. And that visualization piece just brought such a peace to me when I did that. I have always been a believer. I was raised in a Christadelphian home. I was baptized when I was 15. I've always believed there's a God. I've always believed that he has a purpose, that I'm a part of that purpose. So I would say I've, I've had pretty much rock solid belief all through my life, but there was always a part of me that didn't quite trust God 100%. That's what has changed for me now. I just trust him completely now. And I even now look back through my life and I'm like, oh, he was there. He was there. He was there. You know, I see him now. And like we talked earlier today, I see him in everything now. And, you know, some people might say, well, that's easy for you to say because you got your husband back. He's all healthy. Everything's good. But even when I was going through it and there was no guarantee that he was going to recover completely, I was still at peace because I thought God's in control here. I can trust him. And... I'm not worried about what happens. You know, if my husband is permanently disabled, it's okay because God's going to take care of it. He's going to make it work. He makes all things work together for good. I really, really believe that now, where I think before there was a part of me that felt like, no, I have to take care of things, you know, which is not to say that I can just sit back and do nothing. We all have to work things out and do what we can to, to accomplish the things that need to be accomplished. But I'm not anxious about it anymore. I'm, I'm at peace with it. So to me, that's what faith is. It's having that peace, knowing that God's in control and that no matter what happens, it's okay. It'll be good. In the end, it'll be good. Let me play devil's advocate. You may not have an answer for this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It worked out good for you. 
But there are plenty of people out there who would listen to this and go, didn't work out so well for me. So what's the answer for that? Well, I feel like I kind of have already addressed that in the sense that, you know, for me, yes, things turned out really well. But even as I was walking through that, I knew that was a good possibility that it wouldn't. I did my research on this. What he had was acute respiratory distress syndrome. So I looked that up on the internet and it was not a pretty picture. People are often permanently disabled by that. So I knew that was a possibility, but I knew that God would be with us through it all. So, you know, there are people who go through a situation that doesn't turn out well. They lose a loved one or their loved one doesn't recover the way they'd like. But faith is knowing that no matter what that outcome of that trial is, God is walking you through it. And he will continue to walk you through it as long as you hold on to his hand. Like I said, he gave me such a peace. Anybody can have that peace if they just hold it. You got to cling to God, you know, through everything. And, and, you know, sadly, we have people in our own family who have turned away from God as a result of trial. But um, to me, my thought is, if you turn away from God, you have nothing. You don't have the peace. You don't have the hope. You have nothing. Uh, you know, if you cling to God, He will, in the, in the ultimate long run, He will make it all work together for good. Maybe not immediately, maybe not five years from now, but ultimately He will. And He will help you walk through that trial. So, you know, that's where my faith comes in. It's, I just feel like you've, you just have to trust God. You just have to hold on to Him because He's going to be the one that's going to help you through it and make it work out well. It's not going to work out better if you turn your back on God. It's definitely not going to work out better. Based on what you just said, let me see if this is what you're saying. You're not saying, oh, because I got to this point where I gave it to God, he cured Mark. No. Because really what you're talking about is a higher level, really. It's not a, I asked God and he answered my prayer. It's whatever was going to happen. You had reached a level it's not a results, understanding. Results it's a change based. in your thinking yeah. and how you look at life. Uh, when I prayed to God, when I gave this problem to God, it wasn't my expectation that that meant he was going to fix everything and make it good. At that point, there was a good possibility we would lose our home if I couldn't make the mortgage payments. Um, there was a good possibility that Mark wouldn't recover or would you know not full, recover fully. So it wasn't sort of like, okay, God, I'm trusting you to make this all go away and fix it all. It's not about believing that God can fix it all. It's about believing that God will walk with you through it and will guide you and will help you and encourage you and ultimately make things work for good, which doesn't mean you get what you want out of it. Doesn't mean everything's going to turn out the way you want. But, you know, I, I, even, I prayed that. I said, God, I know this might not turn out the way I want. But all I want is for you to be there, for you to be guiding my footsteps and, and guiding what happens and work things out in your, in your time and in your way. And I'm trusting you to do that completely. So I, I, I firmly believe that had things not turned out well, had Mark remained disabled or had we gone through other trials, I had reached the point where I just trusted God so much. And I feel that way now, that I trust God so much that Whatever happens, I know he's in my corner. <laughs> I know he's working it out for me. What did you learn about faith? You know, that's an interesting question because really, I've been self-employed since 1984. And I learned a long, long time ago that I can't control anything, that, you know, God's in control. I should share, he, all through our marriage, he he's the kind of guy that just will take that leap of faith and and he was always you got to trust God more you got to trust God more and I was always just resistant to that <laughs> so yeah for me it's been an ongoing lesson I think what I really came away from with all of this is just how fragile life is and you take so much for granted you know even losing my parents even losing some friends it's never going to happen to me until it happens to you and then so time is short. Try to make the best of it with what we can. But yeah, I think ultimately, if you go through a trial, eventually, if you look with the eyes of faith, you see 
that's why that happened. Now I get it, you know, even though you might not understand it at the time. And I think you have to go through experiences to be able to help others down the road and you share with them and encourage them and be there to talk to them as they're going through things. We'd like to think we could go through life unscathed and not have trials, but actually trials are probably a good thing. If it was all fixed now, where would be our yearning for Christ's return, you know? It's like we yearn for his return because we need it so badly. We have an incredible God. We have a God who cares intimately about us. And I used to sort of have this feeling like, well, he cares about the big things, but the little things, not so much. But I see now the evidence. He cares about everything, every single thing. And, and we can turn to him in every circumstance. And I guess that's what I feel like I would encourage people to think about in terms of their faith is that this is a God who loves you and wants the best for you and will will do anything for you. You know, you just have to trust him. It might not be the thing that you want because that might not be ultimately be the best thing for you. But he really, really cares about you, every, even in little intimate things. That's something I, I wish everybody could understand. Mm -hmm.